Hey, Jan Ezra here. In this lesson, we're going to learn about Handbrake, what it is, why you want it, and how to use it. And here's our agenda. First, we'll find out what Handbrake is and where to get it. Then we'll look at an overview of the interface and the workflow. We'll check out the presets. We'll look at how to encode to x.264 with Handbrake. We'll look at how Handbrake handles aspect ratio adjustments and deinterlacing. So what is Handbrake? Handbrake is a free open source x.264 encoder. And in a lot of ways, it's a better option than Compressor and Adobe Media Encoder because it gives you access to the x.264 codec, which is better than the codecs that come with either Compressor or AME. And to download the product, just go to the URL shown or just Google Handbrake and download and you'll be able to find it pretty quickly. Here is Handbrake and there's a couple of windows that you don't see right away. Here's where you click to get to the source. This is how you start encoding. This is how you add a job in here to the queue. This shows you the queue which is over here. This is a separate queue window. These are some of the files that I've been testing with, and if you want to see the file, you just click the lens there. Picture settings, we'll spend some time here. This is where you set things like the, uh, the resolution, and you control things like aspect ratios. We'll cover that in detail in a few moments. This is the preview window. This gives you a preview of the file being encoded. You open that up here. This is the activity window here, and this shows you what's going on under the hood in Handbrake. I don't find this useful, but if you're very technical, there, it's likely you would find it useful. And then this toggles the presets window open and shut. Okay, let's take a look at the Handbrake encoding workflow. Once you run the program, it will start with the source file window open. So if it's not open, you could just click up here, and that's how you select your file. So let's select this HD file. So this is a 720p file. Let me load it into the program. And let's say I wanted to encode it at a 640 by 360 resolution. The file's here, and you choose the destination folder here. Obviously, you can name the file what you want. Let's call this 640 by 360, and click Save here. And here are the various configuration options. If you've got a preset that you want to use, you can just choose the preset and that populates all the fields here. We're going to focus on three fields. We're going to focus on video, audio, and advanced. We're going to ignore subtitles because we don't have any in the files that we're using, and chapters because we're not working with DVD-based content. Okay, so we've got a 720p file loaded, and you can see that here. So right now the output is at 720p, and we obviously have to change that to get to our target of 640 by 360. You do that in the picture settings window, which I just opened, and most of the time it helps to have the pre preview window open as well. So this is the video file that we're working with. And I want to change this to 640 by 360 output, which I do by adjusting these controls here. The mod is set to mod 2, which makes it really take a long time to adjust the resolution. So I'm adjusting it to mod 16 till I get too close to 640 by 360. And Okay, now you see I can't get the 360 that I want in mod 16, so I'll change this to mod 4, and now I've got the 640 by 360 output that I want. So this is good, and we'll cover some of these controls when you're working with SD assets um, in a few minutes. So let me close this, and we're back in the handbrake interface. Okay, so then you would go through and set these controls here, and we'll cover how to do that for x.264 in a moment. You look at your audio controls. Probably all we're going to do here is drop this to 128. Do want to, you know, you change the sample right here, and you have a good representative number of codecs. You can use HE, AAC if you'd like. I pretty much like AAC, LC, which is what this delivers. One of the nice things about Handbrake is if you come back into the preview window here, let me see if I can make this a bit smaller. I can't you can go live preview. And what live preview does, it actually encodes a short segment of the file to show you to show you what it looks like after compression. So if you want to run a quick test, this isn't, this isn't a preview of your source footage. It's actually encoding the file and showing you what it looks like after applying your encoding parameters. So that's kind of a nice feature. Helps you make sure that you've got what you want. And then you can start encoding right away by clicking start, or you can choose add to queue, and 
Once you're ready to start encoding, you can click Start here. If you want to look at what's in the queue, you, you click that. Click Start here. And you can tell that the handbrake developers don't take themselves too seriously. Kind of a fun message. And it's useful to open up the queue window because if you want to play the file, you just click here. And that shows you where the file is in File Manager, right in the Delete folder where I put it. And then I can just double click it and play the file. So let's take a look at the presets that come with Handbrake and also how to create your own. So to access the presets that come with Handbrake, click Toggle Presets, and that opens this window here. To apply a preset, just click it, and that takes the configuration options from here and then inserts them into the various configuration windows within the Handbrake program itself. And most of the presets are for devices, and I guess I would say use them as a starting point, but go back to the table that we use for iOS and for Android and make sure that the parameters are within the constraints for whatever device that you're targeting. So the, the general purpose iPod preset uses the baseline pro profile, and it gives you an output resolution of 320 by 180, which is correct, but it uses constant quality, so you don't really know what the data rate is going to be. I think uh, to play back on the oldest video-capable iPods, you need a maximum data rate of like 640 kilobits per second. You don't know if you're going to get that with constant quality. So I think you need to go in look at the parameters, go back to the tables that we used in previous lessons, and then you know make sure that the, uh, the presets that you use are going to create video that will play on your target device. If you need to save a preset after you configure it, you can always just click the plus button here. And this is Jan's saved preset. And if you want to describe it, you can click Add here and then here's where your presets go, and you can hover over the preset and you'll see the message that you typed. And you can also hover over these presets and see the descriptions for those devices. Okay, now let's take a deep dive into the X.264 configuration options available in Handbrake. So we've got our source file loaded, we've got our output file loaded, 640 by 360, and you know, let's work from the top down and go through all the configuration options. I can use either an MKV file or an MP4 file. Since this file is for streaming, I'm going to use MP4. The Handbrake help file has a good description of when you might want to use MKV and when you want to use MP4. But for streaming, MP4 is it. You would click large file size if you're working with files over 4 gigabytes. That's not an issue here. Web Optimize is always a good idea for files that you may use on the internet. And we don't care about iPod 5G support. This file is for computer playback. Here you have your choices of video codecs. You've got uh, H.264, which uses the X.264 codec. That's the one I would use. If you wanted to encode to MP MPEG-4 or MPEG-2 using FFmpeg or the FFmpeg application working beneath of Handbrake, then you would choose those. But here we're going for X.264, so that's correct. And choose the target frame rate at 2997. And you want peak frame rate or do you want constant frame rate? And I like working with constant frame rates. I think that's generally safer, so I'll use that. So here's constant quality, which typically is only useful when you're encoding for archiving. Uh, I guess if you're encoding for movie watching from your hard drive, perhaps it's a good, um, you know, that's a good option. But if you're encoding for streaming, typically you want to use an average bit rate. And for 640 by 360, I would do something around 1.2 megabits per second, which is right around what CNN uses. Always want to enable two-pass encoding. And then Turbo First Pass reduces quality a bit, but gives you faster encoding. I don't really care about the speed of encoding in this particular occurrence, so I'm not going to select this. And then you have two options here. If you just want to use the preset and then the tuning mechanism that come with X.264, and that's what I recommend for most beginners, is you just want to choose your preset with this slider here. So placebo gives you the absolute best quality, but it takes a very, very long time to encode. Typically, what I use is either very slow or slow. And I typically don't tune unless I'm working with animation, so let's leave that alone. And then fast decode allows the file that you're producing to decode on lower end devices. We don't care about that because we're producing for computer only. And I'm going to choose the high profile here. And let's boost this up to 
Now to get the 640 by 360, which somehow got changed, I need to come up here and then you see how slow it's going. That's why I changed this to 16. And now every click gives me 16. I'll get up to 640 by 360, change this back to four, and there's the output resolution that I want. Let's check that in the preview window. That looks good, it looks aspect ratio correct. So I will close this and close this. So I mentioned there were two ways to work with X.264. One is to just use the presets and tuning here, in which case if you go to the advanced window, everything's grayed out. On the other hand, if you want to customize these parameters here, you can use X.264 advanced panel or check this checkbox, and then the advanced panel becomes accessible. Let me point out that these are pre-configured with the preset that you have here. So I'm going to toggle back to this window and even though it's grayed out you can see for for example 16 reference frames 8 B frames. And if we come back here and drag this all the way to ultra fast and then go back here we see that this has changed to 1 and 0. So if you want to start out here choose the basics with this control and then go back in to the advanced window and just customize the ones that you know about, that's a pretty good way to go about it. And typically that's how I work. So I would go to one of those, you know, very slow or slower in this panel here, then click use X.264 advanced panel options to access that, and then come here. And I don't like B frames over three. I don't like reference frames over five. I want to make sure that CABAC entropy coding is selected, things like that. Otherwise, if you want to customize these, there are tooltips available for all of them. You just have to hover your pointer over that particular field. And the general way it works is the lower the number where the option is within the drop-down list, the higher the quality. So here, this is the highest quality option. This is the lowest quality option. This was the default for the preset that we chose in the front panel. Same thing here. This is the highest quality option. This is the highest quality option. And the reason those options are selected is because over here, we use the very slow preset. If we come back here and then come and now look at the advanced panel, we'll see that a lot of these are in very different settings. So again, if you want to start your configuration in this window by choosing a preset and then customize that by clicking this checkbox and coming here, you know, that's a pretty valid way to do things. Again, I would change this to five. I would change this to three. I would look at audio and you know, typically I don't want to go higher than 128. And this is a pretty good preset for 640 by 360. So at this point, I would say, okay, well, let's save this. Okay, and then up here, and yeah, maybe I'll just use the same thing and save us all some time. Okay, so that's the preset saved, and next time I want to use that preset, I can just choose that, and it will populate the fields in, the, in all these configuration screens. Again, if I'm concerned about this, I could go back into this preview window and choose Live Preview, which is going to do a preview applying the compression parameters that I just dialed in. Get up and down and get back to normal activity. So, you know, that looks pretty good to me. And if I wanted to try a different section, I would just come over here, choose Live Preview, and we can see what it looks like in a higher motion section. Okay, so that looks good. And then I would just click Start to start encoding. This message tells you that your file is done. Again, if you forgot where you put it, you can always check over here or you can go into the show queue, click here, and this will open up the folder and select the file. All you have to do at that point is click it, and then you can watch the file play. Okay, let's take a look at how to work with aspect ratio adjustments and handbrake. And typically this is gonna be a problem when you're working with either 16 by nine source footage or four by three source footage that's SD. So this is a DV file at 16 by nine source, and if we go into the preview window here, 
we see that it's 720 by 480 pixel resolution, and that's because all DB files are 720 by 480. But because it's 16 by 9, it's stretched out during viewing to 853 by 480. Now, typically, I want to encode this file to fit in a 640 by 360 window. And the easiest way to do that is to choose the picture settings here, change this to None. Let me bring the preview window back up. And we've already changed it from 720 by 480 to 720 by 404. Same aspect ratio, that nothing looks distorted there. And I just want to dial this down until I get to 640 by 360. Okay, so now I'm at the 720 by 480 source, output is 640 by 360, and we're aspect ratio correct because it looks normal. So that will give us the output that we want without distorting the aspect ratio during the encoding. That's how things work with a 16 by 9 file. Let's take a look at a 4 by 3 file. And this file here will do double duty for us, as you'll see in a second. So this is a 4 by 3 file, so if we open this up in the preview window, we see 720 by 480 pixels, but because it's 4 by 3, it's going to be displayed at 640 by 480. And that's actually fine. When we produce a 4 by 3 DV file, we want to produce it at 640 by 480, or some 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So let's go back here into the picture settings, and again, I would choose none, and that's going to drop us into the 640 by 480 output resolution. If we bring the preview window up again, we'll see 720 by 480 source, output is 640 by 480, and that's exactly what we want. So we would close this, change our parameters as desired, and then click Start to encode the files. Okay, let's look at deinterlacing and handbrake. And in the preview window, we can see the file that we're working with, and this is the scale suncam file that we've looked at a few times over the course of this lesson, and we see a lot of interlacing artifacts. The entire file is interlaced, and that, that'll be important in a moment, as you'll see. Let me close this and access the interlacing controls in the picture settings dialog. And this is where we spent a lot of time working a few minutes ago. To access the deinterlacing, you click here. Now, there's two techniques for deinterlacing. They both use the same controls. If the entire file is interlaced, you want to keep this over on the right. If the file contains some portions that are progressive and some that are interlaced, you want to bring this over to the left. Controls are the same. You just need to tell Handbrake whether the entire file is interlaced, which in which case you put it over here, or whether only a portion of it is, and in which case you put it over there. This file is completely interlaced content, so I'm going to keep it on the right. And here are the various techniques available in Handbrake. And I ran some tests, and as we saw with pretty much every deinterlacing tool, some deinterlacing tools are good for some kind of footage, and, and, and others are good for other kinds of footage. So this is, um, this is the slow deinterlacing. And if we look here, the rattan curtain looks really, really good, especially compared to here, where we see a lot of visual artifacts in the bob. Here we see the text for deinterlace fast looks not terrible, but it's not great either. Where if we come over here to bob, the text looks a lot better. And if we come over here to slow, the text looks about the same. So I guess the high level point is, depending on the type of content that you have, you may have to try one or more of the techniques available in Handbrake to get the best result. Okay, so that's it. This is Handbrake. You learned what it is, where to get it, and why you want to get it. You learned how to use it from both a workflow and a preset perspective, and you learned how to perform aspect ratio adjustments and deinterlacing. Next up is Section 5. <music>